Hey guys, what's up and welcome to another RMA Fire tutorial. Um, so this isn't like part of the same series, but it's a continuation of some um, really cool tricks that you can use after um, after I recorded the flip tank configure boundary tutorial. Then I did another tutorial on showing you guys how to do the collision setup of this boundary um, ocean. And um, here's the links to both of them if you guys want to check them out. But now I want to show you guys how you can do like controllable um, forces around the object. And here's an example of what I mean. So the problem that I was running into the project that I was on is, let's see. Say for example, we have this is the box that is animated and this box is creating some splashes right um but then the client was like could we have this have like a little engine here and create additional splashes or like disturb the water around it in different ways so um i was looking into different types of solutions and i think something that really works for um, a problem like this is using um, volumes to advect some additional velocities so just to cover what i was looking into on the previous tutorials was like first we set up this boundary and this boundary controls um, the area that is simulated and then we have this very basic um, this very basic uh, you know object that is rotating um so just so that it's easier to understand i am going to um not do any rotation and of course if you want to go really fancy like you could even put an engine on this thing and that's gonna give you even probably very 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 cool forces but this is the gist of it um you want to create a volume and just type down the name which is volume here and here you can control the size of your container which in my case i made it kind of large so that it would cover the entire area where the animation of the box is happening and then if you drop down a volume vop you want to add a little bit of curl noise based on the position and fit that between whatever value you want but i found that destination min of negative 0.8 will give you negative values and it will allow for um you know i liked it and then i'm exporting the velocity which is a vector okay that's all you need to do and then you want to drop down a null and say for example this is my out volumes okay and then right here you want to have the input of the geometry that you want this volume to be created from so in this case we want to create this from our animated box this would be um, whatever object you're having interacting with the liquid okay once we look into the volume trails you will notice that we have this volume trails coming out of um, you know our box and this volume trails, we can increase the length or whatever. Um, all right. Let me see something here. So you can see that um, the, the the trails will show you the direction of the velocity and right now I've clamped this to zero just because I don't want like any velocity going up but 
I mean you could control that right there as well and then as you can see I am also like just playing with this and tweaking um, the direction of this velocity here so I'm just gonna do it a negative one so that it's moving in the direction opposite opposite from where this is happening um, just do a negative one here as well okay so I'm happy with the way in which this is moving and I am happy with like the frequency that I've added to it and so you can like basically play with the frequency here the amplitude of the velocity roughness um, and all this fancy stuff and then I'm gonna say out volume and this is the volumes that we're gonna be pulling into our simulation in here so we come here into our flip tank we have this boundary layer with our box and then we want to come inside and then we're gonna drop down a um, pop a deck three volumes we're gonna collect that into our forces and we're gonna say we want this to pull the information from our uh, out volumes we're gonna change this to update velocity and um, I'm gonna do a velocity scale of 2 just to test and you can see that it's automatically creating those velocity forces around our um, yeah around our thing um, or whatever object it is um, some some interesting use like it this is really cool to use like for example at the tip of a of a boat or something or around like I'll show you what I mean for example if we make this a box just a little bit higher in scale let's make it like two And um, let's have a look at this. So as soon as the forces, the forces are gonna actually interact with the object. Say if it was a boat, for example, and um, it will start to give us some really cool stuff in front and in the back of it. So there's multiple ways that you know that you can use this one of the uses that i've ha found for it in the past is isolating the particles that are around it and using this as a an additional pass to like a, a bigger kind of simulation um that way you can kind of you know play around with how much of it you really want you really want to have um affect the the simulation that you have going on but as you can see it's it's actually it's really interesting and and it really allows you to have some um you know more aggressive type stuff of course remember we cranked it up pretty high here but you can make this much more subtle and you can have this blend with your current original velocity all right guys i hope this is useful and um i will be back with more